And good afternoon and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Um, we will be talking about technology and reading instruction. And I'm excited to have three great educators on the call today who are going to be sharing um, one of their favorite apps to use in um, reading instruction, um, different applications that they use with, your stu with their students. So I'm sure that you all will leave with um, a lot of great ideas and hopefully a few new tools, at least one new tool, that you're planning on taking with you and using with your students when you leave um, the call today. And we will get started with um, a lot of great information after I do just a couple of housekeeping uh, items this afternoon. First of all, my name is Mary Carnahan, and I am the e-learning resource specialist with the Department of Education Office of e-learning, and I get to um, host and produce host most of these and produce all of these webinars that we share with you all. I'm just trying to get some, uh, share some great information about educational technology uh, with you all. Um, again, things that you can take back to your classrooms. And um, I've asked everybody to introduce themselves in the chat box. Hopefully you see that chat box over on the right side of your screen. So if you haven't yet, um, Introduce yourself, tell us your name and where you're from, maybe even what grade you teach. And um, today I just threw in a fun question about your favorite Halloween candy. I think we've all got candy on the brain um, after last night and probably um, today either some, some um, extra excited students who were still on a sugar high or some very tired, tired students who um, were up too late and or ate too much candy last night. So. Um, just a little candy question for you today. And also, please use this um, chat box to ask questions of our presenters as we go through the call, and also share some ideas that you might have yourself, um, applications that you're using with your students in reading instruction, or maybe ideas of, of different ways to use the applications that are being discussed. Um, and make sure that when you are uh, using that chat window to select everyone from the Send To drop-down, you'll see that right above the little box where you type. Um, by default, it only sends messages to me, so I'm the only one that sees them. Um, so we want everybody to see your messages. So please um, select everyone from that drop-down, and we can all see the questions. I have muted everyone's line as you entered the meeting today, so please keep your line muted. That way we will not have background noise um, during our presentations. Uh, the only people who should be unmuted are our presenters. Um, so I appreciate that. That just limits the distractions um, and background noise. And I think that's all as far as that goes. So um, just a little bit about some upcoming um, professional development opportunities from our office. Um, I have a webinar scheduled, another webinar scheduled for next week. Um, it's kind of a quick turnaround for, for me from one, one webinar to another one in a week. And um, because we're going to be talking about an opportunity uh, to do an activity around the, the um, Indiana Bicentennial that we're celebrating this year, um, we've got two uh, educators who are going to be on talking about this project that they came up with called Indiana Skype Centennial. And if you're familiar with the idea of mystery Skype, where you connect with a class somewhere in the somewhere else in the country or in the world, and the students work to try to figure out where that other class is at. It's that same idea, but in Indiana and um, just between counties. So if you are interested in that idea, um, please join us next Monday. Um, it's a different day. We're usually doing webinars on Tuesdays, but next Tuesday is election day, so our office is closed, so we'll be doing that webinar on Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. So check out our website um, or social media for more information on that. So we're, we're very excited about learning more about that opportunity. Um, we are in the middle of a book club. We're reading Kids Deserve It, Pushing Boundaries and Challenging Conventional Thinking. It is not too late to join that book club if you're interested in some uh, great conversations with other educators around the state and also some PGP points. Again, check out our website. You can click on the professional development link right on our homepage and get more information 
about the book club. And um, last but not least, on this page, Twitter. If you're using Twitter, please be including INE Learn, the INE Learn hashtag, in your tweets about education. Um, that way, other uh, connected uh, educators in the INE Learn community will see those tweets. And uh, we have our weekly Twitter chat this Thursday. The topic is um, it's our coaching week. Um, this would be the first. Uh, Thursday of the month, so it's our coaching week, and it's going to be about the new ISTE standards. So, again, if that's a topic that interests you, please join in that Twitter chat. That is at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, this Thursday night, and every Thursday night except for holidays. And one quick last thing before we jump into our topic of the day is the Speak Up survey. Uh, this is a great free survey to um, just gather lots of useful information from all of your stakeholder uh, populations in your school district. So students, teachers, administrators, technology folks, um, media specialists, and then also your community. Um, and I think there are some other groups in there too that I'm missing. But this is, like I said, just a great free uh, survey that, that provides some great information. So that is open until January 13th. And um, hopefully every school has um, somebody who's taken charge of that, who's going to um, get, get, receive that data from Project Tomorrow in the spring. So if you want to check out more information about that survey, the link is right there on the screen. And let's move on to our topic for the day. So again, we are talking about technology and reading instruction, and um, we're very happy to have four educators from around the state. We've got one from central Indiana and then a couple from Scott County, um, Scott County 1 and 2, um, both districts covered. So we've got Mitch Mosby, who will be starting us off, and then Sherry Fugate and Tiffany Koppel. Um, so thank, thank you in advance to the three of you for joining us. And I am going to turn the um, audio over to Mitch, if he is ready and there. I don't hear you yet, Mitch. All right. Can you hear me now? I do, yes. Perfect. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Mitch Mosby, and I teach the fourth grade focus classroom um, at Noblesville School. Specifically, I teach at Promise Road Elementary. Um, it's my first year in fourth grade, but I have used um, a tool just like Actively Learn with my first grade classes um, for the past four years. So. Um, if you're a primary teacher and you're looking for other resources that you can use with other grade levels, I have used this with primary grades. Okay, and if you'd like to contact me, um, there's my personal and work email, as well as my Twitter handle. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so the basics about Actively Learn is, as you can see, it's the interactive reading platform that allows teachers to leverage their best practices to support, motivate, and engage students in deeper learning. Um, a lot of you have probably used other tools in your classrooms. I know at the elementary level, um, a lot of teachers are big fans of reading A to Z. And this is just a different option for teachers to use, but then you're able to customize text that best meet the needs of your students. Next slide, please. So on the screen, you can kind of take a look at this is what your students see. And with Actively Learn, I forgot to mention, you can use it from any web-enabled device. So if you use Chromebooks, whether you use iPads or any other device, um, you are allowed to use Actively Learn. They currently don't have an app that you can find on the App Store, but you can easily um, save it to your home screen. So here's just an article that was chosen um, that you can see. So students are allowed to highlight things, and they can categorize their notes. And I like this because, um, and I'll speak about this in the next slide, is that depending on how you're focusing um, your attention in your group lessons, you might be able to apply that using Actively Learn. So we personally use the notice and note strategy, so I'm allowed to customize all the different categories so that my students can kind of showcase how they're applying those strategies with any given text. So you can use them for the um, notice and note fiction or nonfiction, or you can simply use the default, which is what you can see um, on the screen, which is meaning and evidence, text structure, main ideas, author's purpose, people and events, 
evaluate argument key terms and tone and your thoughts. So it's very customizable just to meet the needs of your classroom. Next slide. So here's some just few reasons why I really like using Actively Learn for each student. I can actually see the work that they're producing and kind of figure out where I can support them. One of the things I like using this is I sometimes use it for a pre-assessment so I can see if students are highlighting different things that I hope that they would notice and if they're not noticing them I can focus, focus on that in my small group lessons. Um, I can also embed questions at different steps. So if you've ever used Reading A to Z or Kids A to Z, um, the online version, they give questions at the end of the text. And sometimes it's appropriate to check for understanding in the middle and you have the opportunity to do that. So you can ask questions, multiple choice, um, extended response. It's really up to you on what you're looking for and then you can embed that within the text. And I've already kind of hit on the notice and note and kind of customizing those strategies. Um, but I really like the opportunity for students to ask questions as they read. And if you put students in small groups or if you're doing a whole class text, you have the option to ask all your group members. You can actually have a deeper discussion because the student can post the question to the rest of the group and they can have a peer answer it. They can also ask questions directly to you. And then you as a teacher have the ability to add videos, links, and other things that would support your students to have a deeper understanding of what they're reading. Next slide, please. So here are just some other things that I've kind of hit on. Um, one of the options is that you can give students, as I said, a pre-assessment. Because I like to see whenever I'm beginning a new unit and reading, kind of seeing are they hitting the topics that we're eventually going to cover. If not, I can kind of mark down notes as well. Another benefit of using Actively Learn is that it will record any time a student asks a question, they look up words. So you can kind of see where their support is and you can kind of scaffold to help them increase their um, reading skills. It's also nice, as we previously mentioned, that there's that social interaction piece. Sometimes students aren't always talking to each other about the text, but by using Actively Learn, they have the ability to ask each other questions, answer them, and then when you bring that back to maybe a um, guided reading class, they can kind of, there's already your question starters that you have. You can kind of see if, they, if anybody wants to add anything else to the discussion. Next slide. And I think it's always important that students are actively reading, and this is kind of a tool, I mean, actively learn is the name of the tool, but you can really see how students are engaging in the text. Whenever you're using a paper copy, you can never really tell. Um, some students just use post-its and other students don't like using them. So whenever you have these prompts within the text where they're forced to answer a question, kind of allows you to know what do I really need to work on the student? Where can they use the most support? And we're creating those active readers. And it also, the last thing is that it creates that interaction between you and the teacher. I mean, you and the student. Um, because sometimes my students aren't always vocal about what they're reading and where they're confused, and they can simply highlight it, and there's actually an option that says, I don't understand, and that it alerts you. So it's kind of great when students are reading independently, you'll still get alerts, just letting you know the student had a question. So um, if you're working after school or you have time during your reading block and you notice it, you can respond to the student directly to kind of guide them forward. Okay, and next slide, which is the last slide that I'll be talking about for Actively Learn. So here's kind of just like the flow. Um, okay, so I had a question that I'll answer real quick. So there, um, Susie asked about the cost. So there is a free version, and with the free version, um, you're allowed to upload three PDFs or Google Docs a month. And then you can also still track your students' answers, um, how they're doing to multiple choice questions, how they're doing with free response. Um, and they also have lots of different articles that you can choose from, so you don't have to just upload. You're not just limited to three options. So personally, I find a lot of options um, for my upper elementary students to where they already have them built in in their catalog. So when you go to their catalog, you can see that there's articles directly from ReadWorks, which is a great resource for teachers in terms of um, different strategies. There's also articles that come from Newsweek. Um, different news sources, so you're not limited to 
just those three uploads a month. So there's lots of different options, but there is a premium feature. So if you're, pers you're a person that has a lot of digital resources that you want to upload throughout the semester, there is a monthly cost of $18 if you decide to upload more than three per month. Okay, so back to this um, last instructional flow. This is just kind of what I do each week with my students. So I am figuring out an article, whether that's a Google Doc, an article from the catalog, or a PDF, and I'll upload that. So with my classroom, I actually have my students in two groups. Um, so there's a small group, which is for my guided reading groups, as well as a whole class. So some things we might be working on for science and social studies. Other times we're just focusing on reading comprehension skills. So I, that's why I have them in two groups. And then I go through the and then I go through each of the texts. And I'm allowed to ask questions. I can insert a note, insert a link. I can define words for students, and I can also just add an, any kind of message to the students because sometimes as they're reading, we know that there's kind of tricky parts and that we can actually support them by adding more information there so they kind of have more clarity as they're reading independently. And the last thing, so after I prepare the text, then it's kind of, I assign it to the different groups and then they're ready to read independently. So you can maybe do that whole class. You can use it as a center, which is what I did before I was one-to-one -one iPad. I should have said that earlier. So my classroom is currently one-to-one -one iPad. Um, so once you assign it to the class, they're allowed to read it write on it and they can see other students' responses. And then once you're done, whether you're working in a small group class or you're just using that assessment, you can see all of the feedback from the students. What are some vocabulary words that they had to look up? Did they rush through the text? That's kind of one thing to where how much time are students engaging with the text, as well as um, you can provide them feedback for that attention that they need. Does anybody else have any other questions regarding Actively Learn? All right, thanks, Mitch. Oh, there is a question that came in. Oh, but she didn't share with everybody. It's, um, is this a supplement to your reading curriculum or is this the main curriculum? This is a supplement. So currently we use the Lucy Calkins units of study for reading, but then we also use Fontes and Pinnell, the learning continuum to support um, small group instruction. So I will actually um, use those different resources um, to embed some of the questions and notes into my assignments for my students. So I will use the continuum, so where the, wherever reading level they're at, I'll kind of focus on some of those skills and embed those into um, the articles that I use for my students. Great, thanks. And if anybody comes up with, thinks of any other questions, um, we should have a little bit of time at the end for Q&A, so feel free to drop a question into the chat box um, as we go through, and there might even be questions that um, are, you know, for, that would cover um, any of the apps. So um, one thing that you mentioned that I'm glad that you did mention um, was that this could be used as a center or as part of a rotation, um, a stop there, or with a one-to-one -one classroom, because I'm sure that we have both um, people on this call, people who have a one-to-one -one classroom and then people who just have a couple of iPads or um, computers at, at their disposal. All right, thank you very much, Mitch, for that great information. And we will move on to um, Sherry Fugate. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Great. I am Sherry Fugate. I'm from Austin Elementary, which is Scott County um, School District 1, so we're in southern Indiana. Um, I did share my contact information there on this first slide. Um, two things that I'm passionate about. I taught um, second and third grade for about 17 years. This is my first year out of the classroom as our technology integration specialist. Um, so it's been a big transition for me. But these were two things that I use in the, in the classroom. We are completely now one-to-one. -one. We kind of transitioned in grade by grade, but we are completely one-to-one -one now. And the things I'm gonna share real quick are um, two things that I use in classrooms, mainly in centers. Um, so you can change slides. Um, Padlet's the first one I'm going to talk about. If you haven't heard of Padlet, it is um, a website or and or I guess a um, an app that the students can use. It can it can be used in lots of ways. It can be used to introduce a new story, uh, ask an essential question of students, any type of sharing about a story or a topic, uh, KWL charts. It can be used in um, whole groups and in centers. And I included there uh, real quick just the uh, web 
a web address for Padlet.com. Okay, you can move on. And then I thought I would just kind of go through it if you've never seen Padlet before. Uh, like I said, it is free. It is very easy to use. Like most other websites, it's free, yet um, there's a paid version as well where you can get a few upgrades, but there's plenty within the free um, to make it useful. It's kind of a whiteboard where students can share or answer. They can share a picture. They can uh, simply write a sentence. Um, when you get more uh, complex in upper grades, they can share audio and video as well. Uh, this is what the screen looks like when, when you first log in. You will have to create an account, but again, it's free. And the little box there is just to start your first Padlet. You can go on to the next. And when you bring it up, it's going to look generic. Um, you can change your title. If you want to, you can put a description. I don't usually put a description. When you scroll down here, there are ways that the boxes can be set up, and that'll make more sense in a second. Um, the middle one for me is the most useful because it keeps each student's um, response a little more organized and easier to see. You can play around with these backgrounds. They're plain if you just want to leave it white or yellow, or there's You'll see a camo one in a second. There's all kinds of fun ones. Students could create their own if you want them to create something uh, within their writing or reading as well. Um, so once you set up the way that you want it, you would just click Next, and you can move on to the next screen. And as you can see, I changed up the background just to see what I'm talking about. I usually start one myself. Um, you'll do that by double-clicking on anywhere on the screen, and it'll pop up blank, and you'll see that again in a second. Um, and then that's where they would answer whatever question that you have posed or whatever information that you want your students to share. The easiest way to do this is to um, grab that web address up there and create a QR code. Um, and then that's how the students will connect to it. So they won't have to have any kind of login or anything like that. It's simple to use. So if you create that QR code, you can either put it up on your board uh, for the whole class at once, or you can have it in a center so kids, as they come to that center, um, can scan that code and answer whatever question that you have for them. Okay, you can move on. So I just went through quickly. You can use any QR code generator. This is the one that I like. You put in your web address and you get your, your QR code. That's what they'll scan. Um, and so if you're going to the next slide, you'll see what I mean. When students get on the app, and I highly recommend the app, it's a lot easier. When they log, when they, um, open the app, it will ask them to like continue as a guest, but they can just scan that QR code, tap that button, and it'll automatically pop up a QR code reader and it will take them then straight into the Padlet. And then there's just the same one. I did it on an iPad just to show you what it would look like in an iPad. They just double click on the area and like I said, the box pops up and then they can start putting in their information. Okay, you can go to the next slide. I think I'm talking really fast. I do that when I'm nervous. Um, Again, double click on the box. That's where they'll start typing. I always had my students put their name there where it says title just so that I know everyone has answered and if they've answered. Or at that time, it'll audit. I always keep it, if we're doing it whole class, I'll keep it up on the screen for everybody's answers to pop up. So I may say, hey, Johnny, go back and look at that sentence. Let's see if we need to put a capital letter, that kind of thing. Or that's not appropriate for what we're talking about. Go back and look at yours again and that kind of thing. And they can also kind of get ideas from each other that way as well. Okay, to move on to the next screen. And then there's just an example. That's what I was talking about earlier when you select how the boxes line up. This just keeps it organized. Um, it doesn't matter how you do it. I just like it this way. That way it keeps them lined up and you can see everyone's answer. Okay, go on to the next screen. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to share that I also use in centers is Pick Kids. I love Pick Kids. It's also a version, it is a version of Pick Collage. They just came out with it, I think, this year. It gives a little less internet access. There's no YouTube link like there is in Pick Collage. Um, so they don't quite have that same access. But some of the ver some of the options are a little more kid friendly too that they like. Pick Kids is free. Uh, it's an app. It's a creative way to present information. Um, there's no login required, which I love because we have enough names and passwords to remember as it is. Uh, you can use it as a chart for kids to list things um, or review material. I used it primarily for vocabulary, but it can be used for um, all kinds of things. If you go on to the next slide. 
This is just some screenshots to show you when you first get into pick collage. There's a couple of options, but what I primarily use is the freestyle. When you click on that, you get a blank page and these options down here. Um, they can click on background where they're given background options, uh, photos, they can do a web search, but again, since this is pick kid, their web search is just for pictures. So when they click on that, they can type in cheetahs and it'll give them a, a list of pictures of cheetahs. So it's a little more um, secure that way. And then they can type on the text A to um, type information in. And the most favorite is stickers. Kids love to add stickers to their, um, to their presentations. Okay, next slide. So just a couple of examples. I clicked on photos. They can have their own photos. They can take a picture of a classmate if they were making something. There's a bunch of crazy photos there. But um, to make their presentation, I had a Johnny Appleseed in there. So I clicked on that. And then the next uh, box you'll see is just another screenshot. Once I did that, I added Johnny Appleseed to the, to the presentation. I can make his picture bigger or smaller or turn him sideways, all kinds of creative things to do. Anything that you could have done with paper and pencil or poster board and crayons and stuff you can do on pit collage. I then clicked on the A to get my text box so that I can type in anything from a word to a paragraph that you can put into this. Okay, next page. Uh, and again, there's the word where I typed in Johnny Appleseed. These are what stickers look like. Uh, they can, um, there's five or six or, or so that come free automatically with the, um, with the app. Okay, you can choose the next. And then there's my finished product. Um, I did this with our first graders in, when they came to technology class because they were celebrating uh, Johnny Appleseed. They had to put his picture and his name, their own name, and then something that they learned about Johnny Appleseed. So it's a great way to just reinforce something going on in the classroom. And then the final page is just an example of how I used it in my third grade classroom. I had a poster in that center for vocabulary rules, and the rule was they had to have the vocabulary word, they had to look up the meaning from our glossary, they had to have a picture that related to, um, to the word. It could have been a picture out of the book from that story, or it could be something they found from the web, and a sentence. And then the fun options is what we called it. They could change the font color and the font style and the background, but they had to have all of their pic collage pages done, and then they could go back and do all the fun stuff. So those are my two fun things to share. Thank you, Sherry. And there's one question that just came in, and it says, uh -huh. is this only an app, or cause it, can it be used in the lab? Uh, Pick Kids is only an app, as far as I'm aware. But Padlet uh, is online, can be used online. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for sharing the two apps. Thank and you very much. You're welcome. And last but not least, we've got Tiffany Koppel. Hi, can you hear me? Awesome. All right. Well, I'm Tiffany Koppel, and I teach uh, sixth grade digital literacy at Scottsburg Middle School. So I'm uh, Sherry's uh, neighbor to the south um, in Scottsburg. Um, so it's good to see her in here. Um, I'm going to talk today about digital interactive notebooks um, with Book Creator. Um, even though I teach sixth grade now, I've taught uh, first grade, I've taught third grade for a long time. Um, so anything that I'm talking about today is something that is universal. Um, I've even uh, presented this to high school teachers that I know are now using it. So um, it's pretty versatile for, for just about anyone, anybody. Um, the Book Creator app, it is a paid app. Um, it's $4.99 in the app store. However, there's a volume discount um, for anything over 20 copies. It's a 50% discount. Um, if you're on an Android device, it's already uh, half price um, from the App Store. And then it is Windows supported. I don't know a whole lot about that part of it, but I do know. So um, this is not uh, supported on Chrome or anything like that. But um, if you can think, uh, if you can take the idea of it, and if you're on a Chromebook, uh, you could do this with Google Slides. Um, so maybe just try to take the concept and, and see how you can run with it in your classroom. All right, thanks, Mary. All right, so what are interactive notebooks? Well, interactive notebooks are designed to enable students to make, um, obviously, creative, independent thoughts and connections about the topics they're learning. So today we're talking specifically about um, literacy instruction. And so, you know, as you read books together and as they're growing um, as literate students, 
um, making them or having them make thoughtful connections um, with what they're reading. And so the interactive notebooks are a great way to do that. All right, advance, please. This is a traditional interactive notebook, uh, a lot of cutting and pasting and, and glue, and I love all that stuff. Um, my students, we still have all that here in sixth grade as well. But a lot of this takes a lot of time. Um, and so my partner, uh, my colleague and I, we were trying to brainstorm an idea of how to make this go digital, and Book Creator allowed us to do that. So if you'll advance, um, and I, I just did a couple of screenshots on this next slide. Um, this, is, this is an example of, of what a page would look like in a first grade digital inter interactive notebook. Um, I used um, some resources from Christine DeCarbo, okay, just anything that you could get um, off of Teachers Pay Teachers or wherever you get your resources, and I plugged that into the student's um, page in Book Creator, and so they sat in uh, groups and they had to do some fluency work. Um, but instead of listening to 20 students read to me every single day, which we all know is impossible, um, they can read every day and they can record their own readings and then put that into their interactive notebook. So that at the end of the week or whenever I conference with that student or I'm doing their fluency checks, I can check their fluency work throughout the week with that student and we can hear and listen to their growth um, together. Um, it's a more authentic example um, rather than just doing running records all the time. This is something that I can show parents. Um, so it's just a really good way to record um, some authentic work. So again, I will put the passage inside of their book creator book. Um, they would record their video and then they would plug their video in um, to the slot there. You can kind of see. Um, so this is an example of a first grade. All right, advance please. So digital interactive notebooks, we're going to take it to a new level. Um, we're going to let them blend the traditional methods and we're going to put them with digital and we're going to explore and we're going to also showcase their learning. So Book Creator is great because it has a lot of different features. Basically anything that you can grab from your camera roll, whether that's audio, video, photos, um, YouTube videos, we've even um, downloaded YouTube videos and put those in there for the students um, to watch. Um, anything that you can get or grab from the camera roll can be added into Book Creator. So really the possibilities are, are pretty endless. All right, advance please. So why, uh, why do this? Well, time is value. So like I said, it's kind of hard to listen to 20 readers every single day or 22 readers is what I had my last year in first grade. And it's really difficult. Um, and so by doing this, they're allowed to, uh, they, they can add their reading in there uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, they would put their little headphones on and they would go back and listen to their fluency recordings um, and, and they could put that in there. Plus I'm not hauling out glue, paper, scissors for every single um, interactive notebook activity. Um, it's pretty quick to open up their uh, book creator book and plug in whatever it is I'm asking them to do. They can also annotate right in uh, Book Creator. So if you put a PDF in there, um, a worksheet, um, let's say activity sheet, um, since we're talking about EdTech, great. Uh, and they can write on top of that right in there. Um, organization, I can, uh, students can submit their books. They can export them in several ways. Um, they can export them as a PDF. They can export them as an EPUB file, which is the book file. Um, they can even upload it to iTunes um, and they can grab it that way. I've even had parents, um, we've submitted them and parents have ordered their books off of Shutter um, Shutterfly or Walmart.com, wherever they like to do that. Um, so they can export even as a movie, which is um, pretty cool too. Um, and so they can export those to me and I can download those all at the same time using my LMS system. Um, Scott County District 2, we use Canvas. Uh, you might use Google Classroom or Google, uh, Schoology. There's lots of different ways. Seesaw, um, it's also very compatible with Seesaw. So uh, whatever you use, um, students can export there and save their work. All right, thank you if you can advance. All right, so um, the key here um, and what I want to talk about with literacy is getting that authentic practice and, and being able to combine all of these different apps. You know, Sherry just talked about pit collage. We use almost at least two or three times a week, even here in sixth grade. Um, you can use Chatterpix, you can use Telegami. Any of your favorite apps where students showcase their work, they can plug into their book creator book. 
And what's the advantage of doing that is that it's all in one place. Instead of having students submit all these different little files to you, maybe they plug them all into a book creator book for the week and submit that all at the end of the week. Um, so it's, it kind of became a really nice way um, of staying organized and being able to see things. Um, let's face it, when I have a classroom full of, you know, 35 third graders, um, I can't see everything that's going on. As superhuman as we like to be, we can't. Um, and so when they're doing group work or they're doing independent activities, you'll see here in the top left corner, this is a young lady. She's doing a pit collage, and she was sorting seeds. Now, this isn't literacy-based, but I'm just showing you what um, something you can do with this. She's sorting seeds which is very much a traditional activity that I've done for a long time. And I may have, you know, I may be over at the other group. Well, now she's taken a picture, she's putting that in her pit collage and storing that there, and now she can put that into her interactive notebook. And at the end of the week, I can make sure and go back and see, okay, she did get this concept. Or maybe I'm checking it, doing a quick check at the end of the day. Hey, everybody, open up your interactive notebook. Um, I want you to flip to your page that documents this, and I go around and check very quickly. So you can see here, um, I have in the bottom left corner, that's a vocabulary meme. I love using memes uh, with my sixth graders especially. They really enjoy the humor of those, so we use vocabulary, and they turn them into memes, and we put them up. Um, but that's vocab work, and um, maybe that's part of their showcase um, in their interactive notebook. Um, sketch noting, if your students are sketch noting, I sketch noted with first graders that may be as simple as bringing up the Doodle Buddy app or any other whiteboard app while you're reading a story and having them visualize what they see um, in their mind when you're reading a story or draw a certain character or uh, draw a connection, a text to self connection. And they can draw those things and add those into their interactive notebooks. Uh, you see a student there, he's got his, um, his uh, oh my goodness, word went right out of my head. Uh, sight word, okay, he's got a sight word card there in front of him, and he's using the Stock Puppet app. Um, he's making a sight word story. Well, now he can put that into his interactive notebook. So you see here, students are doing a lot of different things. These are authentic forms of practice that now I may have lost, you know, I, I wouldn't have seen all of that work five or six years ago, but now because of Book Creator and, and the ability to store things and put them all in one place, I can now see those um, very clearly. All right, advance, please. It's very student friendly, so up in the top left corner, you see I have a first grader. They're doing work in Book Creator. Uh, the tools are extremely simple, but they can be used complexly. Um, so anything that a first grader can do, a sixth grader is going to do um, even better, um, they're going to find better ways to use the tools, the same tools that, that they're all using. Um, my best friend, she teaches kindergarten. Her kindergartners use Book Creator just as fluently as my sixth graders. Um, but it's, it is very user friendly. Basically, if you can hit the plus sign, you can find all of the tools. You have your pen tool, you have your camera tool where you can pull from the camera roll, you have an audio button that you can add in. Um, we, right now, we have an ESL student, he came from India speaks zero English, um, working on a book creator book that has the picture um, with the audio and the text beside it so he can push the audio and he can hear the words said correctly. Um, I've done that with um, a first grader who is ESL. So there's a lot of different options with book creator, not just interactive notebooks. Um, but once you play with it, you can see um, that there are a lot of different purposes for it. Um, okay, advance the slide, please. Um, accountability and parent communication. So you can see in the top left corner, this uh, young lady, she has just completed one of her station activities. This uh, station activity was not a digital activity. However, because we're using our digital interactive notebooks, I want them to document all of their station work. So she takes a photo and she puts that onto her page. Um, I would put a blank page um, interactive notebook that would say my Monday station work and they would just add in whatever picture or a video um, of what they were doing. So whether that was fluency or here, I, can, I don't know, it, it was a write the room maybe activity or something. And in the bottom picture, uh, you see a child sitting with her dad. We had a donuts with dad's face and they had to choose one of their interactive notebooks to share with their dad. And so their dad and mom now are getting to see these snippets of our classrooms 
that they wouldn't normally get to see. They see uh, pictures of maybe them sorting tiles on the floor, or maybe they see pictures of them riding their finger in shaving cream and taking a picture of it, or those things that we see all the time and, and we know that they're learning, but you know, when the worksheets don't go home, the parents think that must, they must not be doing anything, right? So now because of Book Creator and these digital interactive notebooks, we were able to save all of our photos and videos and now parents could see those. So it's pretty nice. Um, piece and, and benefit to doing it this way. All right, advance, please. Um, it's very workflow compatible, so I've got a lot of options on here, but there are so many more. Um, whatever your school uses to get um, content to and from students um, will work with Book Creator. Uh, Seesaw, as of right now, I, I don't know, they were working on accepting EPUB files. Um, as of the summer, I haven't heard recently if they have started doing that. So if anybody knows, you can put that down in the uh, chat box, um, and, I'll, and, and that would be great. Um, but I know that they were working toward that. So again, it's very workflow compatible um, so that you can get work to and from students. And again, because it's in one file, you're not searching all over the place for this chatter pics or this pic collage or this telegami or this photo from station work. It's all in one space. And then if you're a Seesaw user and believer, uh, then you can put that in Seesaw and that's part of their ePortfolio, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, okay, advance please. Okay, so how do I do this? So you might think, okay, this sounds good, but how do I do it? Um, it's really hard in, in the time I have to really explain it, so I'll try really quickly, and then um, I'll show you where you can find a step-by-step -step guide. Um, so advance, please. Um, you can do this one of two ways. Um, with my primary kids, um, and I would say probably K through two, I would create an actual file. I would create a template, and I would actually send the whole book file um, to the student. Um, and they would just add in their content as we go. So you see there, I, uh, Dr. Seuss Week example, um, they would put a picture of themselves on their cover and, and they could kind of decorate that like you would any other book with the student. Um, and that is a really tiny photo of, um, of one of the pages, but I have a picture of the book. We did the sneeches. And as I would read each book, I would allow them to bring this page up and they could draw pictures or they could write words that they heard that they liked. Um, and so they would add those things in. Um, that's one small example of, of what we would do with these, but we would also add in station work. Um, we would, maybe if I had them do uh, a pic collage of, if we were reading Alexander, No Good, Horrible, Very Bad Day, uh, maybe things that would be a bad day and they would make a pic collage of that and add that in. So all of those things would kind of go into a page that I would have already kind of set up for the students um, so they don't have to do a whole lot of thinking or extra work. I want to really get to the meat of what we're doing. But as, as you get older students, um, you know, three, definitely six and on up, I would just maybe have them create their own book. Um, I, I usually still send them a, a cover page just, so, just for ease, um, but I would send as we go. So you can see their geography, this is not literacy based, but I send them a map and I want them to do some annotation on this map. I would just send them that file. They would save it to their camera roll and then add it um, pretty easily into Book Creator. Um, so th that's kind of easy. They can always blank bring up a blank page. You know, older students are, are capable of a few other things. Uh, kindergarten kids, very capable. Not saying they're not at all. I'm just saying, you know, reality says, you know, our sixth graders, they can, they can start to add in some things and, and have even more control over their learning. All right, um, advance, please. So start small. Um, if the thought overwhelms you to do, you know, a book for a whole week, maybe think, okay, maybe I can do a vocabulary interactive notebook where each day we're going to add in a new word and maybe we'll do a pic collage with this word or maybe we will do a chatter pics with this word or maybe we'll just um, write the definition in there, or maybe we're going to record myself saying a sentence about this word. Um, think about your units, like my Dr. Seuss unit. Um, it was really easy to keep all of our Dr. Seuss work in one book. Um, it made it really nice. Station work, maybe you just want to start with stations. This week we're going to document our station work 
and each day on Monday, I have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday page. And on Monday, I'm going to add in a picture from my station work. Um, so that's a good way to start. And of course, journal writing is a great way to start. Um, okay, um, next slide, please. Oh, sorry, I didn't put that on there. Okay, so if, um, if you're really curious about how to do this more step-by-step, -step, um, I, have, um, I have a blog post that I did screenshots and, and the whole works. And you can find um, our blog at two, the number two, um, techie, T-E-C-H-I-E, -E, teachers. Um, and that's at Blogspot. If you just search two techie teachers and book, cre book creator, you'll find it. Um, book creators even put out their own version of that. So um, it kind of gives you a step-by-step. -step. Um, they're always coming out with new features. They are great to teachers. I'm actually a book creator ambassador, and right now I'm working on their beta, uh, of their 5.0, and it is really, really awesome. So um, it's always improving. But anyway, that's it. I get really passionate about it. I could talk, talk for like three hours about it. So that was really tough in that amount of time. So hopefully I didn't talk too fast for you. You didn't talk too fast. I could understand every word. So thank you very much, Tiffany. <laughs> um, and if you have, if you can share the link to that blog post in the chat, um, sure, that would be great. Or, or you gave everybody a good explanation of how to find it. So either way works. Um, so thank you, Mitch. Sherry and Tiffany, if anybody has any questions, please drop those in the chat window. I haven't seen any come up, so um, I'll just do a couple of quick things and see if any more come up. Um, thank you to everybody who is sharing their favorite app also. Um, and again, like was discussed earlier, these, you know, you have to know your own classroom to know what your kids have access to. So whether you're a one-to-one -one classroom, and whether you have laptops or tablets or iPads, or if you have a classroom set of devices, again, whether they be iPads or computers, um, you're going to have different uh, capabilities as to what you can have access to. So um, hopefully from what Sherry and Mitch and Tiffany have shared today, everybody can leave with um, at least one new um, application to try with your students. Um, when you leave today. Um, so again, drop any questions that you have in here. Um, I did record this webinar, not good. It says it's recording, so um, hopefully it actually is and I get a good uh, quality recording and I will post this um, hopefully next week. Next week we will be at the um, HEC conference. If any of you are going to the HEC conference next Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, um, look for the Office of eLearning there. We'll be in a booth and then doing um, several workshops on St. Thursday and uh, sessions on Friday. And um, it doesn't look like there are any questions coming in, so we might be done a smidge early. Again, it's you never know when there aren't questions. It means either people are just overwhelmed with lots of great information or um, I can't imagine that it's that everybody already knew everything. So hopefully it's that you're just excited to go with that um, information. Oh, yay, Tiffany. I'll probably run into you um, at HEC next week. Um, okay, so Susie shared also that there's still a free MyOn um, subscription through the Hoosier Family of Readers. So if you aren't utilizing that opportunity with your students, definitely check that out. That's a great way to access um, lots and lots of digital books. So um, check that out. I have up here on the screen, while you all are, are just taking one last quick minute to see if you have a question, um, just different ways to keep in t contact with us. Um, you can really get to everything e-learning by going to our homepage on the DOE site. Um, you can either get there by going to the um, URL here at the top, or you can just go to the DOE site and search for e-learning and um, that will find us. Um, but definitely connect to us um, in any one of these many ways. And again, I am seeing no questions coming in, so I think that we are um, good to go. So I guess we'll end a little bit early today. So thank you to Mitch and to Sherry and Tiffany all for sharing some really great information. And um, again, I will share this um, the recording 
Um, if you would like to get in touch with any of those three presenters, they all shared their contact information, and I'm sure that they would be happy to answer questions that you might have about the applications that they shared. So everybody have a wonderful evening, and um, we will see you all in another webinar or at a conference. Thank you all.